What's up guys? This is Pro Warriors. In this video, I'm going to show you how to play PSP games on your Android phone using the PPSSPP emulator. This is not a joke, and definitely not clickbait. As you can see, I'm running PSP games right on my Android device. And guess what? My phone has just an entry-level chipset with only 4GB of RAM, yet I can still run PSP games in high definition, up to 4K resolution, and at 60 frames per second, thanks to the PPSSPP emulator. I'll walk you through the full setup process, how to install the emulator, the best settings and configurations, how to customize your controls, how to add games to PPSSPP, and most importantly, how to tweak the settings for the best performance on your device. Because performance varies from device to device and game to game, these tips will be a total game changer for you. PPSSPP is a powerful PSP emulator for Android that lets you play PlayStation Portable games in high definition. It enhances graphics, upscales textures, and supports features like post-processing effects to improve your gaming experience all on your phone. Let's get started. First, we're going to download the PPSSPP emulator on our Android phone. You can download the emulator either from its official website or directly from the Google Play Store. Sometimes the Play Store may show issues depending on your Android version. In that case, just visit ppsspp.org and grab the APK file manually. However, I recommend using the Google Play Store. Just search for PPSSPP emulator. You'll notice there are two versions available. I suggest going with the blue version, which is completely free and has no ads. There's also a PPSSPP Gold version, which is paid. In a previous video, I tested the free version, but I noticed the Gold version offers slightly higher FPS and graphics quality for just $5. My suggestion is to first try the free version. If you're satisfied and want to support the creator, go ahead and purchase the Gold version, it's just $5. Setting up the emulator. It's a small app, so it will download in a few seconds. After installing, launch PPSSPP. The app will ask you to select a folder where PSP data will be stored. Simply click OK and you'll be directed to your phone's internal storage. In your phone storage, create a new folder and name it PPSSPP. Then click Use this folder to allow the emulator to store the data. Now we're inside the emulator and you'll see the main screen where your games will be displayed. Since this is your first time using it, the library will be empty. I want to give a brief introduction to the PPSSPP interface. At the top bar, you'll see the recent section for recently played games, followed by games, which displays the titles you've added to your library. There's also a homebrew and demo section for demo games. Next, you'll find buttons for grid view and list view, along with a refresh button and a gear icon for more customization options, especially useful for increasing or decreasing the grid size. On the left side, you'll see quick options like load game, settings, and other tools. The next step is to add a game to PPSSPP. If you're completely new and don't have any games yet, you can try out the demo games available in PPSSPP to get started. However, I don't think these are very interesting. So instead, we'll manually download and add our favorite PSP games. Switch to the Games tab at the top, click Browse, and navigate to the folder where you've stored your PSP games. The emulator supports both ISO and CSO formats right out of the box. Disclaimer. The emulator itself is legal, but using illegal ROMs is forbidden. I do not support or provide access to pirated games, so please use legal copies for your safety. In the previous video, I received one common question. Which games are supported? Is this game supported or not? My suggestion is to check the PPSSPP compatibility list, which is available on their official website. From what I know, this emulator is capable of running almost all PSP games, even on an average smartphone. Let's tweak out the settings to ensure the best experience. In the graphics section, you'll find two rendering options, Vulkan and OpenGL. Vulkan is recommended for better performance on low-end devices, while OpenGL is ideal for higher quality on more powerful devices. Start with Vulkan, but switch to OpenGL if your device can handle it. If these options are not available, then enable software rendering. Next is the rendering resolution setting. Higher resolutions make games look sharper but require more processing power. Set this to 4x if your device supports 1080p and adjust it based on performance. For the display resolution, keep it at native to match your phone's resolution. V-Sync helps prevent screen tearing but can lower FPS, so turn it off for smoother gameplay on lower-end devices. Display layout and texture should be a mandatory functional option. First, enable stretch mode to ensure maximum display coverage. Then, you can add filters, as every file has different uses. 
I personally prefer using 4 by HQ pixel art upscale and a color corrector. Keep in mind, filter preferences may vary from person to person. If your device struggles, make sure you enable the frame skipping option and set it to 1 or 2. This will help reduce lag. Also, enable the skip buffer effects option. Now you might notice that the render duplicate frames to 60 Hz option becomes invisible. This happens because frame skipping and skip buffering are enabled. If you want to force the FPS to 60, you'll need to disable those two options first. Another important setting is buffer graphics commands. Setting this to one or no buffer can improve performance. Experiment with this option based on your device. In terms of texture filtering, switching to linear improves visuals but requires more processing power. If you experience glitches, try enabling the low resolution effects option for low-end Android phones. Turn on show FPS counter and show speed options to monitor performance. The controls menu is another highlight of PPSSPP. If you're using a Bluetooth controller, use edit touch control layout to move buttons, resize keys, increase or decrease, and also customize the key types. If you have a controller, there are a lot of other settings, just leave them as default. In the audio menu, I recommend keeping the default settings. PPSSPP supports retro achievements, allowing you to unlock trophies and milestones just like on modern consoles. Simply log in with your retro achievements account in the settings to start tracking your progress. As for the system menu, there are lots of options to explore. Two things I recommend are enabling clear UI background. You might have noticed I added a custom background and you can do the same. Also, feel free to change the theme if you like. So guys, play around with these settings and figure out what works best for you. And don't worry if you mess something up, there's always a restore settings to default option. Now let's launch a game to see how it runs. Here is Tekken 8 running on the emulator. As you can see, it performs well, hitting 60 FPS at 2x resolution. Increasing the resolution improves the visual quality, but you will lose FPS still. I'm getting full speed. You can also save your progress and customize settings for each game using the up arrow button. Now let's try some games and see whether they run perfectly or if we need to tweak some settings. The FPS and speed will help us identify the performance, and we'll also check the graphics quality and any possible glitches. By default, we're using Vulkan as the back end, but remember, some games actually perform better with OpenGL. If you notice that the FPS is low, try reducing the resolution, which will help the game run smoother. If the game is lagging, you can also enable the frame skipping option to improve performance. Sometimes the touch control buttons might not be in the correct position, making it uncomfortable. In that case, simply edit the touch control layout while playing and adjust it as needed. If you experience audio glitches in PPSSPP, go to Audio Settings and enable Audio Latency to High or try enabling Audio Stretching. This usually fixes crackling or stuttering sounds. PPSSPP is free, feature-packed, and a fantastic way to enjoy PSP games on your Android phone. That it, guys? Make sure to like, subscribe, and join our Discord server if you need any help. See you in the next video. Take care!